right, we're back. We're live. This is Think Tech. I'm Jake Fidel. It's two o'clock clock. We're talking about the military in Hawaii. More specifically, we're talking about the military academy admissions process for people in Hawaii with Bob Takao. He's a retired army colonel. Did I get that right? Lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant colonel. Okay, fair enough. But I'm going to call you a colonel anyway. I'm sorry. And uh, <laughs> and we have Kali Inoa uh, Maeva, and he's a student. And he's graduating Punahou, and he's going to go to, well, he, he was accepted in every single academy, which distinguishes him. He's going to wind up going to the ROTC at Harvard. You know, you'll be fine, you yeah. <laughs> know. So, so, Bob, uh, can you sort of introduce Kalei Noah so we know him better than that? Oh, he's a uh, person that's been involved in our Army Junior ROTC program here at Punahou School since ninth grade. And uh, Kalianoa's uh, brother, his older brother, uh, received a appointment to the Coast Guard Academy. And his father serves as a, in the military as well in the reserve component. So their family is well acquainted with the military. Uh, he is probably the only student that I've had in almost 19 years of doing junior ROTC and four years at the University of Hawaii doing ROTC obtained uh, an appointment to all of those major service academies and then uh, of course was blessed to receive uh, uh, an offer to attend Harvard and uh, he's going to enroll in the ROTC uh, program there for the Air Force Detachment and he can talk uh, maybe a little bit about that when he gets an opportunity but he's been an outstanding student uh, a presidential award winner here at our school for those students that are just outstanding students uh, of good character and quality that we want to see in all of our students, and he's very deserving. Okay, Kali, you know how much of that is true? <laughs> uh, I think he uh, embellished it a little bit, but uh, yeah, I've definitely been fortunate to receive appointments to all four academies, and I've been a part of a Punahou's JRTC program for uh, four years, and it's uh, just been uh, such a wonderful journey so far. That's great. So, uh, but ultimately, uh, you decided to go to Harvard and take the ROTC program there. Why? Um, for me, uh, I wanted to do ROTC because I wanted a more traditional college experience. Um, the academies um, offer a more military-based experience, but uh, ultimately, I decided to Harvard uh, to go to Harvard because of uh, all the uh, opportunities that they have there. So are you going to be at Harvard? Are you, are you going to be uh, obligated to do military service after you graduate? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there's a four-year uh, active duty uh, commitment. Ah, very interesting. So one way or the other, you're determined to go into the military. <laughs> yes. What is it about the military that attracts you? Um, for me, my, when my grandfather served in Vietnam and uh, my other one served, I think, 30 years in the Air Force. And then my father is currently active duty in uh, the Army. And my brother went on to the Coast Guard Academy. So seeing all these uh, wonderful men go on to careers in military service, I felt like I had to follow in their footsteps. Sounds terrific. Well, let's go to you, Bob. And let's talk about, um, you know, the way this works. Uh, my recollection is that, that you had to have, uh, you know, like somebody in the delegation to sponsor you, and they had to sort of politic you through in Washington, uh, and then you could get into some academies that way, but you had to have good grades and you had to have a good uh, curriculum vitae and so forth. Um, has that changed? How does it work now? How, how does a young person get into a military academy now? And we have a lot of folks that are still interested in that, uh, regardless of what you may see in the media with the, uh, the generations and the concern with their physical fitness and, and those types of things. We have lots of uh, qualified candidates in the state of Hawaii uh, that are applying to all the various military academies. It's very competitive. And so, as you mentioned, uh, uh, they have to have uh, and be able to endure the academic rigor uh, that is always present at those types of institutions. And so, heavily uh, STEM-oriented, they have to have a very good background in mathematics and uh, particularly to get to um, uh, any of the military academies into pre-calc, at least at the primary stages. They need to attain very good SAT or ACT scores. They, um, they waived those a little bit this past year because of the situation, but they're going back and those scores are still important. 
they'll super score their scores so a kid can take uh, several tries at it and get their best scores. Um, they need to be physically qualified, uh, medically qualified, and they need to obtain that congressional nomination from one of our uh, congressional delegation here in Hawaii. Uh, those are the fundamental steps. Uh, guys like Kanoa, he, he started early. He started as, as early as they started uh, accepting uh, what's called a pre-candidate or a candidate application form, which is all on the websites of all the various uh, schools, uh, academies. And you start out uh, by filling that out to the best of your ability. There's nothing official that's having to be sent at that point. They'll judge that, and determine that you are uh, seemingly a potential candidate. Uh, they'll send you then a pre-candidate, uh, establish a pre-candidate portal for you then to start collecting all your information and sending that to West Point. Right. So, um, you know, I guess I'm interested in, you know, in the, in the tone of the times. Because, um, you know, you, you go through generations of kids and sometimes they're more interested and sometimes they're less interested. Uh, and I guess my question is, um, what does the current generation think about military service and, 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 you know, the top of the line academies, because that's part of how they think about military service. What's the, what's the, the general um, impression these days? Yeah, the general impression I get from young students that I work with, and you know, certainly I work with some absolutely wonderful students at Punahou, a private school like us, uh, but across the board, I'm very proud of the public school uh, candidates and those that have received appointments from throughout the island, and including uh, places such as uh, Molokai. Uh, we've, we've had students from Molokai get into West Point. Um, those students are determined individuals. Uh, they have a sense of service, of meaning, of purpose. Um, you know, that's what I find about them, determination. It, it's not about fighting wars or going out and seeing what they see uh, out there nowadays, because let's face it, they don't see that much of it in terms of conflicts and in terms of what our service members are enduring each and every day. What they're looking at is they're looking at a sense of purpose. Uh, interestingly enough, I have a student who is attending Harvard right now. Uh, is going to be one of Noah's classmates. He's in the Army ROTC program. He earned an appointment to the Air Force Academy early last uh, a couple of years ago. He declined that to go to Harvard. He called me last year, uh, this year actually, in his first year at Harvard, and said, I'm aimless. I'm moving about Harvard. It's a wonderful institution, but everybody here is moving in different directions and they don't, they aren't compatible to mine. And I look at the guys that are at the service academies or ROTC, and they're purpose-driven. Uh, they're out in a mission, and they seem to be having some fun uh, with, their, with their buddies and their classmates. I don't sense that same type of kinship in an academic environment that I'm in here. Uh, oh, very interesting. Now, let me ask you this, though. Um, suppose I, I go to Harvard, you know, sort of like you know, was going to Harvard. And uh, a year or two in, I make that conclusion. Gee, I, I'd really rather be in the service academy. Um, can I can I reapply or transfer? Can I take advantage of the acceptance that I got earlier? Absolutely. He he would have to start all over and reapply, but his chances are probably pretty good because they've already gone through the process before. And I have several other students that I encourage, uh, I encourage ones that get turned down the first time that I've had several students go on to college and uh, they reapply their freshman year in college and they're accepted, uh, but they have to start all over again. They go back as plebes or as midshipmen to the academies. They start all over uh, academically and, uh, and they uh, find a sense of fulfillment that they just didn't get going through regular college. Mm. You know, Khalid, you know, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, what, what about your mission and purpose in the military, whether it's through the ROTC program or through an academy? Um, what, what do you see the experience and the goal of being in the military for you these days? Uh, for me, the main reason I... Uh... Okay. So the main reason I wanted to go into the military uh, was so I could give back to my country. Um, 
as a and I just kind of following my footsteps with my uh, my parents and my grandparents and my brother as well. As I said earlier. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Okay, well, we go through generations and. Sometimes a lot of people feel that way, and other times maybe there are different con considerations. Um, Bob, you know, one, one thing that I, I wonder about is um, the generation coming up now, like coming up in a time of great confusion around the government, around, you know, about Washington, about confidence in the government, the feeling that we are all part of the government. There's, there's a, a bit of a breakdown that happened over, over the next the last few years. And I, and I wonder how the generation that you're talking to feels about that. Um, and I wonder how they also feel about the geopolitical aspect, because in fact, if you talk to a recent graduate of one of the academies, they will be very Akamai about what's going on in the world today. All the countries, all the you know, geopolitical considerations, the leadership, the problems in government, the problems in, um, you know, the quality of life for the citizens everywhere. It's, it's impressive to talk to them, but I'm, I'm wondering if the generation coming up feels that way. Are they Akamai about international events? Yeah, it's interesting from three different uh, anecdotal perspectives. You know, in the high school students that we have, they are Akamai. They are uh, sensitive and they are watching and they are astute to all those things that are happening around them. Um, but they have that 25 meter shot target in front of them. Their near term goal is uh, to proceed and get through the next phase of their lives and try to sort out things and gain perspectives. And that's that's what we've tried to do through this uh, ROTC program, the junior ROTC program that uh, I've been so uh, happy to work with over the many years. We try to focus these, these kids and we try to have them realize uh, what it is in that short, short range target that they're up against and the various options of which they can, can get there. And so that may be uh, putting themselves 24 seven into the military academy, maybe a liberal arts education and a, a great um, university somewhere. Uh, and so they're endeavored to um, get to that next, that next level, which is I need to graduate. And now that I graduate, uh, then look at what seems to be something that makes sense for me to do. Um, that's kind of where they're at. I have a son that's in the uh, Air Force as captain, um, step up a level, um, very, very astute, uh, very in tune. He's in Del Rio, Texas. Um, he's down where the border crossing is in his front doorstep. Um, he's seen the political uh, nature, what's going on. He's seen the government response firsthand uh, of what's going on in his neighborhood. And he certainly understands day to day the challenges that his leaders are imposing on him with many different decisions, many different points of views, many different things that are coming at them from all different directions. And they're having to navigate probably a little bit more than what we as lieutenants and ensigns did when we were first coming in the service before we retired many years ago. Uh, it is challenging. But I tip my hat to them because they keep their eyes focused on what they know they can control. They're not always happy with senior leadership. They're not always happy with the government. Uh, they'll say it to themselves and behind closed doors and the professionals. Uh, but they're certainly watching. And I think many of them come to crossroads, as we all did, about whether we need to continue to make a try to make a difference by working through all this in our positions in, in, the, in the military or whether maybe it's best that we separate and decide to go do something else uh, in their lives. So it hasn't changed very much overall, I don't think, but certainly um, there are a lot of things happening out there that are satelliting around these, uh, these young leaders and such. For those in the academy, it's day to day. Uh, it hasn't changed in the, since the academies were born. Uh, all they wanna do is get another day closer to graduation. Uh, I had a couple of uh, students that, former students and former ones that I had advised, it's so gratifying to see them send me their graduation announcements. Um, some of them barely made it. Uh, others are just so on top of things and looking forward to the next chapter in their young careers. 
Uh, and we all should be proud of our representatives from Hawaii that have made the grade at the military academies because that's quite an accomplishment. Uh, and it's not an easy one to do. And so any of the others out there that are thinking about, well, maybe that isn't me. Uh, there's some other great alternatives uh, and we can talk about ROTC or any of those other ways to go. Um, and we have- There's nothing like national service. Uh, you know, just like uh, Noah said, you know, he, he wants to pay back and we should all be paying back. Everybody should be paying back. Everybody should be investing in the country, investing in, in every aspect of the country. And, and if you're in the military, you have that chance, you have that opportunity and you can feel good about it. Uh, the other thing is, um, you know, we mentioned uh, early on here that, um, you know, it's not like it was, and perhaps um, the old notion of, you know, going into battle doesn't really, doesn't really attract a lot of people. You know, our experiences, our, our national experiences in Afghanistan and Iraq, you know, weren't particularly um, gratifying. And, um, and in fact, the idea of going into that kind of battle is not gratifying. And I wonder what they think about that, because they may be asked to put their life on the line. I think less these days than in the past. I think, you know, the government hopefully is sensitive to, you know, how people feel about putting their lives on the line. But, but how do these students feel about it uh, when they go into the academy or whatever academy it is, or even the ROTC program with Kali Noah, and, and, they, and they wind up in, in a battle zone? How do they feel about that? Well, we certainly, uh, part of my job is to remind them of that obligation, that responsibility and that realism every time they come to my office to talk to me about uh, taking advantage of uh, being able to go to these wonderful schools or maybe to obtain a scholarship and be federally funded to, uh, to take and relieve that, that college debt and that college burden. It's, it's more than a job and they know, I, I try to remind them all the time of that sense of duty and obligation and responsibility and put it all out there um, and the challenges. Uh, and really it is really doing unto others um, and serving your fellow soldiers and sailors, Marines, uh, when that private, when that specialist, when that, uh, that corpsman comes in and has an issue or a problem, you're the educated guy in the house that's supposed to solve those things and help them and help them. Um, get them to the right people. And you're intelligent enough and you're experienced enough and you're exposed enough through what we've endured in Hawaii, on the streets, uh, wherever it may be. But we bring that perspective that says, brother, we're here to help. Um, that's part of the leadership responsibility nowadays. Uh, once we get you well, we expect you now to go out and uh, defend our country. Sure. And the notion in the service is we'll take care of you. And for the most part, that's exactly what happens. Um, and they are very important to the country. And I think for the most part, the country recognizes that. But I, I wanna, you know, I, I, I wanna put myself in the room with you, Bob. Um, when you talk to an applicant or potential applicant, and um, let's assume that he reads the newspapers and he, he may wanna ask you hard questions. I don't know if they actually do ask you hard questions, but if I were that person, I would be asking you, for example, about these articles in the newspaper about cheating scandals at the academies. I would be asking, asking you about the article that appeared very recently, yesterday or today, about racism, bigotry in the academies. Um, and that happens from time to time. And, um, you know, I, what, what do you say in answer to that? Uh, you know, life is not, life, life this is in, during Vietnam, there was something that a Marine recruiting poster said, I never promised you a bed of roses. Um, we, we, don't, we can't promise them a bed of roses because there are realities in the academies and in the service. Do you talk about that? I talked to a young uh, female uh, woman this morning, one of my students this morning. She's actually our, our uh, new incoming battalion commander, our, our top leader. She uh, came into my office this morning to say, I'm really interested. I'm making the decision to apply to the Air Force Academy. I didn't see that one coming, frankly, and, and she's quite qualified. And I, you know, we talked about a bunch of different things but I also told her about uh, the fact that, you know, when you go and you apply and you get in, uh, this is not a perfect society. Uh, your classmates and the people that you're gonna be associating there in the majority are gonna be people like yourself. They're gonna be good people, but there are gonna be people uh, at the service academies, we know, uh, they're still there, that have, uh, that have faults. 
and create these kinds of situations. Uh, they're not going to be the types of classmates and teammates that you want to associate yourself with. Let's be honest. But let's be honest, they're there. Um, they're going to be in your units. They're going to be in anything, any formation out there that you can think of. And if we're naive enough to think that we live in a, in a perfect, uh, perfect world in the military, let's not kid ourselves. But our role is to do the best that we can do, uh, to be people of character and integrity, to call it out as an honest shot, and to do our best uh, to the best of our abilities. And what we represent from a, certainly from a bunch of bright kids from Punahou is, uh, you know, you have the end of the line. And you have the privilege of having gone to a premier institution in this school's case. Uh, but just like a kid coming out of McKinley or, or down the street in Waianae or anywhere else, uh, they have those street senses and those smarts and those intuitions that will, will take them to the next level that says, I've lived your life. I've been on the streets. I've had to, to scrape and claw. I didn't have a privileged education like they have over at that Punahou school. I'm a fighter. Uh, and I can help us rise up. I love all those kids that bring that to the table, and it's not a free ride. Nothing's a free ride. They're in a per perfect position to do that, I think. Kuli Noah, have you been listening to what Bob has been saying? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I have. So I asked you the same question I asked you before. How much of that do you agree with? Uh, I agree with all of it. Um, I think uh, as far as the going into battle part, um, for me personally, I'm scared, but uh, when I applied to the academies and I applied for RTC scholarships, I knew that going into it, uh, it was going to be a commitment and uh, I was ready and willing to take on that challenge uh, if it were to come up in the future. You know, you know, one thing is clear is that we live in changing times. You know, some changes are great, some changes not so great. Um, but, you know, the military changes, too. Right now, there are bills in Congress uh, regarding a, a reform of the uh, military justice system, for example, that could have a profound effect on, on the, uh, you know, on, on, the, on the troops. And I wonder, you know, how you see, whether it's the ROTC, whether it's the academies, how you see the military changing in the course of your career with it one way or the other. As far as the uh, military changing, uh... I think as far as the uh, the like racism and bigotry, there's definitely going to be more um, awareness and definitely more curriculum on that to educate uh, all of us on that, especially with what's happening in our society right now. And um, as we progress in this future, I hope we can uh, shift towards a more like educated military and uh, we can be more inclusive in all of that. Yeah, but that's happening, isn't it, Bob? And for example, if I go to one of these academies, I'm almost certainly going to go to a graduate school afterward in the course of my military career, almost certainly. In fact, the likelihood is I'll go to a number of graduate schools and get a number of advanced degrees. Um, so when I come out, not only will I be a, 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 the graduate of a prestigious national institution, but I will really be well-trained because the government will continue to educate me. Am I right? Do you talk about that? Yeah, those opportunities are certainly out there. And um, it is a motivator to uh, many of these students in order to uh, further their education. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what we look forward to as we look forward to a better generation. Uh, these guys are just, as you can imagine, these guys, these young people, they blow it off the top. We're not even close. Um, I don't, I challenge any admiral, any general out there to tell me anything differently uh, that says, man, when I came in, I'm not sure I could hold this guy's shoes. They're intellectually a savvy. They're physically tough. They're mentally tough, uh, just like we were. But they have, uh, they have a lot more going for them in terms of the tech savvy, in terms of just what's out there. Um, you know, you can look at these kids. Now, they may not know the difference between a cross tip and a fill, you know, and a flathead screwdriver like I do, but they they certainly know how to turn your computer on and make it upside down and work it sideways and make it faster and better and how else do you want it? Um, and that's something we all struggled with when we were young younger. Yeah, but you know, in our generation, and I, mean, I was in the service at the time of Vietnam. In our generation, uh, we were not really. Um, thinking about mm, involved, invested in politics, right? And I think the military, you know, traditionally doesn't really get invested in politics. Now that's been of some concern in recent years because sometimes politics goes goes 
of 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 the chart. Um, and when you have, um, you, you know, essentially the national military power around you, and when you have all that education you get, um, and when you, you know, and you're well respected when you come out, and it's just, it's a it's not hard to run for office, for example. So many people go through the military service, whether the complete retirement or or less. And go into politics is very important. So the the question I put to you is: Is this generation, and I'll ask Kali you Noah know, also, um, are they thinking about politics? They think about national political issues, because the traditional thing has been: Oh no, I don't talk about politics in the military. We don't we don't even think about that. But query: Is that sustainable? Fact is, there are millions of people in uniform, and they do make a difference. And we want them to express themselves. Like we want them to vote. I mean, I've met military officers who say, I don't vote because I don't get involved in politics. That's ridiculous. Uh, so, so question, you know, are they able to break through that old limitation and actually think, talk, participate in politics? There's certainly a number of them. I had, uh, I've had several that uh, were very interested in. He still aren't. I have, I have a couple. One that came to me in eighth grade said, I want to run for president one day, and I want to go to West Point. And, uh, and she still says that today. She's a captain. She's an aviator. She's getting ready. She's had her first child. She said, I'm still running for office when I get a chance. Uh, so I do have some very politically astute ones, and we have some great conversations. But let me tell you that I, I really think there's something called universal values. And those universal values are, is, hey, look, you know, I can only control what I can control. And hopefully I can go out and I can vote and I can live in a democracy where I can do that. And all I really, really care about is getting a decent education and making a good career and a good life for myself and my family. I mean, fundamentally, when I talk to my students about finances, talk about careers and to talk about things outside of the military, those fundamentals haven't changed. Now, they may not wish to outdo us as parents or as grandparents. Uh, that may not be the, the thing as, as you know, our parents brought us up to be. We want you to be better. We want you to be better educated. We want you to be you know, more endowed to, to do the things that you want to do. Uh, these kids nowadays uh, are looking at just what is purposeful. They're looking for sense of, of being a sense of service and giving back but also self-fulfillment in a good way of saying to themselves, I feel good about my life. I feel good about the changes that I've had to make. I've had to make some changes. And that's what they've learned this year in our high school classes and with the guys that we brought in. They've seen that there is no golden road. Everything goes off in branches and sequels and it changes. Um, and they, they open their eyes wide to say, wow, I may not just end up being this career military guy. I may go off in different different uh, angles of, uh, of ways to go. But uh, I think it's yeah. like the basic fundamentals for a lot of them. So, Khalid, you know, you know, we're talking about you know, the norms. We're talking about morality. We're talking about ethics. Uh, we're talking about in, in involvement oh. in the, what do you want to call it, the, um, the, the, the legal and moral infrastructure of the country. Um, how, how do you feel about that? Uh, do you think that the military limits you? Um, or does it help provide you with, uh, with lessons that would be useful, that are useful? Yeah, I definitely think that the uh, military will provide me with uh, useful information, stuff like that. Um, as far as like, politics go, I think in the years to come, we're definitely going to have to uh, definitely become intertwined politics in the military and becoming uh, educated is going to be really necessary. Uh, as politics are part of our daily life, and it's necessary for us to make a change in this world. So, uh, Khalid, you know, would, would you recommend the military to the average person uh, in high school? Would you recommend uh, the academies? Would you recommend an ROTC program in, in uh, you know, a, a non-academy school? Uh, well, going through JROTC, I definitely recommend JROTC. I feel like it's given me a variety of qualities Develop me as develop my character and myself as a citizen. I definitely recommend the academies as well. Uh, there's a sense of discipline that they teach you, and it's like no other. The education there is like no other. And me going to Harvard, it's also an education like no other. And um, having the ability to go to a uh, top school and um, do my military service is uh, something I found really awesome. This uh, to be fortunate to have. 
You know, it is, it is awesome. No kidding. I stand in awe of you. And uh, I wish you well. And I want to offer congratulations on your achievement and getting good grades at Punahou in meeting all the requirements of the academies, all of them, and, uh, and getting into Harvard and the ROTC program there. Congratulations to you. Use it Thank well. You so Use it well, Kulit Noah. And Bob, well, if I am interested in, in joining up and uh, joining the ROTC in, in, my, in my high school or college, uh, or applying to one of the academies, can you point me where to go? Yes, um, there are um, 26 uh, junior ROTC programs in the state of Hawaii. Uh, some are sponsored by the Army, majority are sponsored by the Army, others uh, by uh, the other services as well. So there are probably a junior ROTC program within uh, one of the high schools that uh, your listeners may be um, uh, attending. Uh, the other part of it, which is unique, is I offer a magnet course at Punahou. That magnet course is open to homeschoolers. It's open to students that don't have junior ROTC at their high schools. And we've had as many as, as 40 or 50 students that come in to be a part of that program. And they all they have to do is um, they could Google up punahoujrotc.com, find us on a website, and we'll start up back in, in, in September. It's a great community service uh, that we provide, I think, to everybody out there that doesn't have those opportunities. Uh, certainly for those that are looking uh, to the next level at ROTC and to the military academies, start early like NOAA, get good grades. Uh, you don't have to do a million activities or, or you know, pad your resume with all these things out there. You just need to focus on your academics. You need to be physically fit, no matter what service academy you're intending to try to go to. You've got to be medically qualified. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, there's bumps in the road along the way. Uh, and if you can pass all of those things, then you're in a position to be considered against a pretty elite group of, of students out uh, in the country. Uh, let's not kid yourself. It's pretty competitive. Um, and ROTC now at the University of Hawaii, where I was the Army ROTC uh, boss a bunch of years ago before I retired, now has Navy ROTC. There's no excuse why students... Uh, that are interested in doing the naval uh, ROTC part and being commissioned as ensigns in the in the Navy can do that through UH. Uh, they got a quality uh, couple of cadre members on there, and of course the Air Force and the Army uh, programs uh, there at UH are quality quality programs. Um, well, you know, even if you don't go uh, apply to or go to academy or go into an ROTC program and, and succeed at it. Even if you you know you you're not in the um, you know the, um, the the academy level of of training, uh, seems to me there's a lot to say for joining the military, going to officers candidate school, trying to get a commission one way or the other, or just signing up and and putting putting your nose on a good career. Um, it pays reasonably well. The benefits are terrific. It's a a lifelong experience that you really can't get anywhere else. And it's an expression of public service, national service, and patriotism, which we need, you know. Uh, Kali Inoa, your closing remarks here, and you can say what you think about national service and patriotism if you wish. About that, uh, I'd just like to say I'm super fortunate to have been accepted to all four academies. Um, it's, a, it's an accomplishment like no other, and um still reveling in the uh, excitement. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, if you're going to go for it, you should just shoot your shot. I applied to all four academies because uh, I just wanted to get into one, and uh, I was fortunate to get into all four. And um, now I'm uh, being able to go to Harvard and do RPC there. It's, it's really awesome. Okay. All right. Pretty good. You make me want to apply myself, but I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm beyond those days. <laughs> Bob, your closing remarks, what do you want to tell the people? I want to tell the people out there, if, you're, if your child or if you're, you're a high school student or even a, a junior school student, it's kind of intimidating to look at a guy like my, uh, Noah, who's such a humble guy. I mean, he really is, and he's well qualified. But you know what? You got to step up to the plate. Um, you really do have to do, like he said, go for that shot. And if your shot bounces off the rim, there's some other alternatives out there. Don't get discouraged. Uh, the best thing you can do is find a trusted person 
that will lead you to the right answers. Don't look at all these blogs and all these other chit chat rooms out there that'll give you a whole bunch of stuff that'll talk you out of it before you even get started. Find good quality people out there that, that are in the profession, those that can mentor you or advise you and uh, assist you along the way. We'll find a place for you uh, that's a right beginning, an appropriate beginning for you, and then see yourself take off. There's still a call for service. It's still an honorable thing to do. And by gosh, uh, we just admire all those young people that are deciding to continue to do this in our footsteps. Thanks. Great to talk to you, Bob. And uh, you know, I really appreciate that. Let me add that uh, you know, here on Think Tech, uh, courtesy of the Chamber of Commerce and the Military Affairs Council, uh, we do a show on, on the military in Hawaii uh, every couple of weeks. And the people that I have met over the past year or so have been remarkable human beings and individuals and, and members of the national community. I really appreciate them. And they appreciate you, Bob. And I appreciate you, Khalid. You know, someday maybe you'll come back. You'll tell us how it was, okay? <laughs> you got to pay it forward too, right? Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Khalid. Aloha.